Hello, you're watching Tell It Like It Is, and my name is Kathy Benick. Today we're going to take a look at something that will soon be part of education in the Bedford schools for students in grades 3 through 12. And for an awful lot of people around the country, what will be coming into the Bedford schools is the source of great controversy. In 2009, a new United States education initiative was created called the Common Core Standards Initiative that seeks to bring diverse school curricula in the 50 states all into alignment with each other by following the principles of standard-based educational reform. Whenever, you heard the weir whenever I hear the word reform, I always get a little bit nervous. Anyway, as an incentive for states to sign on, they would be allowed to drop No Child Left Behind, and they'd also be eligible to obtain new race to the top funding created through federal, federal stimulus money, which also kind of puzzles me what federal stimulus money has to do with getting states to adopt a new educational program, but that's just me. Anyway, 45 states subsequently signed on to this common court, including the state of New Hampshire, but, interestingly, the state of Indiana recently decided to suspend the Common Core implementation. The five states that have steadfastly refused to have anything to do with Common Core are Alaska, Minnesota, Nebraska, Texas, and Virginia. Now, implementation of Common Core is not happening seamlessly throughout the United States, not by a long shot. In fact, in Pennsylvania, teachers' unions themselves are currently strongly opposing it. And honestly, there is a rising hue and cry from parents questioning its value everywhere, including here in New Hampshire. I did contact Bedford School Superintendent Tim Mays uh, to see if either he or Assistant School Superintendent Chip McGee would be willing to come on to the show to discuss Common Core, since obviously it will be happening in Bedford. They were unable to do so, but I did receive this from Superintendent Mays, and I'll, I'll actually quote it to you. Quote, we are not advocating for common cause, but are planning to implement the requirement here in Bedford in a way that is best for our students. We will be presenting information regularly at school board meetings, which address our implementation and impacts. It is not our place, nor intent, to advocate one way or another. End quote. I thought that was really interesting. So, we will, however, today discuss questions about the whole worth of Common Core and about the major concerns being expressed about it throughout the country and, as I said, also here in New Hampshire. My guest today is no stranger to tell it like it is, and that's Bedford resident Anne Marie Banfield, who's also the educational liaison for the Cornerstone Policy Research in New Hampshire. Now, Anne Marie is really well known throughout the state. Um, she has been a tireless advocate on educational issues, and her advocacy spans well over 10 years. Um, a, a year ago, she participated on the show in a panel uh, to discuss international baccalaureate in Bedford High School. And a couple of months ago, she also participated in a panel on this show opposing the repeal legislation this year that was filed to end the new business tax credit scholarship program here in New Hampshire. So again, she'll be a familiar face to many, many of you, particularly those folks who are watching who have kids in the Bedford school system. This is a big topic. This is a gal who has been working with people from all over the country on this issue, and the amount of information she has is spectacular, so there's no better person I could have on here today to discuss it. So with no further ado, Anne Marie, <laughs> it is so good to see you. Oh, you too. Thanks for having me. You are one busy lady. <laughs> I, I'm I seeing am? your name everywhere. Oh. You were at the Manchester School Board the yes. other night. Yes. I know you're going to be traveling around to other school boards and yes. groups. I heard you on Rich Gerard this morning. It's yes. almost like I didn't know if I was going to be able to get you. Well, I, and, and, and I'm a volunteer. I'm a volunteer I know for that. Cornerstone. It was interesting. I was at the Manchester School Board meeting, and somebody came up after to, to speak and said, you know, she's a lobbyist. Well, let me clarify. Yeah, you're not I on do anybody's this payroll. out of the, my pocket, and nobody's paying me. I do this because I'm, I'm very passionate about education, and I want the best. I want mm -hmm. the best in our public schools, and I think the kids deserve it. 
Well, you know, um, I admire you because I know you do all this voluntarily, and I, I have just a, a brief glimpse of the amount of time you put into it. And, I mean, it's a year-round thing. You, you put in an incredible amount of time. Yeah. Um, sometimes people don't agree with you. Yep, that's but fine. that doesn't bother you. Yep. You know, you, you do your I research. You know your stuff. Yes. Um, Somebody may say, I don't like the way Emory thinks, but they certainly never, ever could accuse you of not having the subject matter down pat. And, and you do do your research, yeah. which is why I like you here. <laughs> Plus, you're not afraid to say it. Right. You know, right. you'll tell it like yeah. it is, and that's what we love. There so. you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, this whole common core thing, and I'll be honest with you, six months ago, I don't have kids in school anymore, so six months ago, I really didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe a conversation with you was kind of the first thing I heard about it. And it seems like every time I turn around, I'm reading something in a newspaper or whatever yeah. about it. So I'm sure there are listeners, even with, even of people, <clears throat> excuse me, who do have kids in school who are like, what in the heck is Common Core? <laughs> so maybe the best thing to do is to lead people into it is kind of what is it, how did it come about, and who the heck is behind it? <laughs> it? It's a complete reformation of our public school systems in the country, and I think that's, that's why there's been, been, been such a big uproar, because uh, it, it kind of got ushered in without really anybody paying attention to it, and now I think that it's being unveiled in many school districts in many states that parents are taking a look at it, kind of like um, Obamacare, you know, mm -hmm. we, we're going to pass the mm -hmm. law, and now we're going to see what's in it. Yeah, And wonderful. you've got, yeah, you've got parents all over the country saying, wait a second, this is not what we want for our schools. This is not what we want for a state. It usurps local control. I mean, there's a, just a host of problems with it. But I think what the mistaken belief is, is this is just a set of standards. And while there are standards, certainly, with Common Core, this is a complete reformation. This is a transformation of our public schools, and we're seeing, seeing it in Bedford already with competencies, um, with extended learning opportunities, with the real world learning, with school to work. These are all part of the big picture, the big plan of the Common Core architects. But let me get back to the Common Core standards. The standards right now that have been approved for, for New Hampshire are in English and mathematics. Mm -hmm. So right now in our schools, they are now aligning curriculum, now looking at how to meet these standards, how to implement the test, because with standards come the test. Mm -hmm. And then yes. with what comes with standards and a test comes curriculum. Yep. So that's one of the big outcries is this is a national curriculum. Common Core supporters would say, no, it's not a curriculum. It's standards. just a set yeah. of standards. Yeah, I've read that over and over. Right, yeah. but when you have a set of standards and then you have a test, mm -hmm. you're going to have to have align Follow curriculum through. to this. Of I course. mean, that's just the natural progression of this. So to say that this is not a national curriculum, I don't think that's, that's being really forthright and really honest about it. I think you have, you know, and, and, and what's interesting is, um, there's a piece of legislation at the State House right now, SB 48, that specifically is going to identify the schools that uh, you know are not up to par once this is fully implemented. When the assessments come back, and you know if, you, if your children aren't doing well, guess who steps in? It's the state of New Hampshire. So they're going to work with the schools, kind of in a remediation kind of role. Mm. So what are they going to suggest if you're not using the proper curriculum? If you're not using the proper t books that Common Core suggests you use? Sure, you don't have to use that, but guess what they're going to do? I mean, what, what else are they going to do? I mean, that, that in this legislation, they are going to step in. Now, they don't specify exactly what they'll do when they step in, but I think you can logically assume mm -hmm. that they're going to step in and say, your kids are not me meeting the requirements on this assessment. Give us a plan. I mean, they, they're saying that there has to be a plan put in place, and they're going to help them with that plan. So eventually, we are getting to that kind of national curriculum, national standards, national test. And that's, that's what we have right now. Unfortunately, <laughs> the standards themselves are controversial, of course, because they are not internationally benchmarked. They are not quality At standards. All. No, in, in English and math, they are not. And, you know, I've written a couple pieces in, in the newspaper and on the patch, and you can read from the experts. There were two core content experts chosen by Common Core mm -hmm. to sit on the validation committee. Mm -hmm. They essentially developed these standards. They picked these two experts and said, mm -hmm. now we want your stamp of approval. Sandra Stotsky, professor out of uh, University of Arkansas, she used to sit on the 
uh, Board of Education in, in Massachusetts actually helped develop the best standards in the country in Massachusetts. So she was one of the content experts. Professor James Milgram out of Stanford University, uh, mathematician, another content expert in mm -hmm. mathematics. They chose him. They said, give us, give us this, validate these standards. Mm -hmm. Both of them refused, and they have written extensively on why. Here's the flaws, and they lay them out. Sandra Stotsky even prepared a, a sta list of standards that she is giving away free. And I, I sent it to the, you know, as part of, the, uh, part of an email to, to the Bedford School District. Mm -hmm. Don't use Common Core. Here's what's best. Mm -hmm. here's, here's the best standards. And so I'm hoping that they will take that information and at least use that as their guide rather, th rather than the Common Core. So, you know, if, if the individuals chosen by Common Core, the nation's experts, say that this is not worthy of being in our schools, Everybody needs to ask themselves, then why are we doing it? Yeah. Why are we doing it? And I think that's, that's the illogical. question everybody's asking in the other states. And they're saying, wait a second. If our experts don't feel that this is worthy of our students, why did four members of the Board of Education in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. appointed members, not elected by the people, why are they given such power over our schools to bring this in? And these people aren't educators, correct? No, I don't even think they're on the board anymore. I think, wow. that, I think that they're gone. So they're, you know, under, under each government. Now, some, some states have elected state board mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. These individuals are just chosen by, you know, the governor and passed through the executive council, and they are appointed Who to the board. Who may know nothing about education. Who may know nothing. I mean, it can be a reward Absolutely. for being a great campaigner or what have it, you. Exactly. I'm not it, saying that's the case, it, but But you're right. I, I think that people need to go back and see who these individuals mm -hmm. were and, and go ahead and look at their credentials. And you know, are they standards experts? <laughs> Yeah. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even consider myself a standards expert. That's why I went to the experts to get, yeah, exactly. their, get yeah. their opinion on this. And, and, and these are individuals that I have been conversing with and communicating with for years. When they were chosen, I was thrilled because I thought, wow, Common Core yeah. picked the yeah. best. These, are, these, these people are, are of integrity. They are of a principle. They know the material. I mean, they both have PhDs in the content. These are good people to choose. So I was really pleased with their selection. But then to go and just throw it out because they just didn't like, you know, I guess didn't like what they had to say about it. I, I don't know. They just, you would think that if they didn't that's, validate that's it. That's kind of shocking. Yeah, they would come back and say, okay, if you can't validate this, do? what do we need to do? Yeah. So that's just one of the many controversies on the standards themselves. Now, who's behind all this? Well, um, you know, there's, that's, that's a good question because uh, Professor Stotsky, when she was on the, the, the com validation committee, mm -hmm was constantly talking about the lack of transparency. Who's developing these standards? Mm -hmm. Who's behind this? Who's doing all this? She sat on the validation committee and had, had trouble getting information. And she's, she's written about that, that, that there's been a lack of transparency. Um, it, initially, it's, it's, this is coming from the National Governors Association and um, the CCSSO. You're going to have to look that up because it, it's just one of those acronyms. and. Mm -hmm. um, Together, these organizations came together. Counts, uh, something to do with Chief, council, chiefs, state yeah. education, chiefs of state, state education. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're they're not they're not elected. They're not. Uh, this is private organizations. And working with Achieve, which is a, a kind of a think tank, Achieve is part of this. And so, and now who's funding all this? Bill Gates. Bill, Bill Gates, Gates is funding a lot of it, and taxpayers are funding a lot of it. You know, coming through the stimulus. So we're funding a lot of this. Uh, yeah, and, and it's interesting that in one of the biggest problems is the fact that Bill Gates has donated money to so many organizations that are saying, well, Common Core is good. Well, yeah, but we also noticed that you got a large donation from Bill Gates. And when did Bill Gates become the guru of education in the country? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. You know, I think like everybody else, they see a problem. And, you yeah, know, but... But is he the person to be, to, fi to be fixing the problem? A lot of people have asked that question. And a lot of people are saying, is, is this the right person? Because the direction we're going in, I mean, he's, he's come out against liberal arts education in this country. He wants you know, to do away with the liberal arts education. Totally. Yes. This is what he's, and, and then we had, um, who's the former guy that, that just passed away from the cancer from, with the. Uh, oh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, yeah. who, who supported, uh, so they actually had a little debate on this. Liberal arts education, keep in mind, it also supports 
making sure that your children understand history so yeah. it's not repeated, so that they learn civics yeah. education. And this is the guy that is, you know, funding this and pushing this, and I mean pushing it with a large amount of money to many organizations. So what does he think? This. Everybody should be a scientist or a mathematician or well if this is the if this is the way I don't see I don't think this is gonna happen. I mean, if you look at the math standards, it's, they're not internationally benchmarked. Common Core, when they first came out, said these are internationally benchmarked standards. So many people pressured them and said, show us. Mm -hmm. They've backed away from that terminology now. Oh, they, really? won't, they won't even use the term. Really? It's been removed from the website. That's they won't use the That's term. from the website as well. Yes, because huh. they're not internationally benchmarked. These, you know, Professor Milgram said that your children will be two years behind by the time they get to ninth grade algebra one if they follow Common Core standards. You know, they, they replace Euclidean geometry. Any engineer out there, any mathematician, should be in these schools and at the state saying, wait a second, you're re I mean, this is the foundation of geometry. Mm -hmm. And they're replacing it with uh, a geometry that was invented in Moscow like 50 years ago mm -hmm. and, and thrown out mm -hmm. because it failed their students. This is what we bring in for geometry standards. Uh, they say they're career and, and uh, college ready. The, the experts would, would argue, no, they're not. No, your kids are not going to be career and college ready if they follow Common Core standards in the schools. And the states, well, obviously there, there are states that opt, have opted not to get involved. But now that New Hampshire is involved, I'm assuming that no local school district can opt out because it's now a state kind of a mandate. Mandate, right? Well, I, I think that, that begs the question, where's the local control in that? Did, did our school board vote on this? No. Did, I don't know of any school board in the state of New Hampshire that voted on They're this. They're basically being told right. about it. They're being told about it. And it, my question is, why is the school board just sitting back and taking that? I, I would think a school board member would say, let's have a vote on this. Let's, let's vet this completely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let us decide. Now, there are ramifications and, and you know, you, your school will have to tell you that, you know, you will lose title funding, Title mm -hmm. I funding, if, mm -hmm. we, if we reject this. So, you know, I think that everything needs to be laid on the table. Is the money more important than the quality that we're going to get from this? Do we have any idea what the state of New Hampshire will actually get dollar-wise? No, no. They have to apply. Well, the, right? we didn't get Is any race to the top funds. So we, we got nothing. We wow. signed on to this. We got nothing from Race to the Top Funds. But then there's that coercive manner that if we don't stay with this, that federal, federal dollars that's already flowing in regularly through title money will then be withdrawn. They, they really? Will, yes. So that's one of the concerns. So, you know, I can understand some of the schools being very concerned about losing that money. But, you know, I, I mentioned this the other day to a legislator. When you get a, a piece of legislation in front of you, if it's going to cost any money, there's a fiscal note. Mm -hmm. that, and every piece of legislation, when you vote, you have to know exactly what this mm -hmm. is going to cost. The Board of Education voted this in with absolutely no, no idea. cost estimate and just passed this on to the schools. And I mean, how can they say that it's a voluntary thing for states on the one hand, mm -hmm. but on the other hand say, if you don't do it, we're taking money you're mm -hmm. already getting away from you right. on stuff that has nothing to do and with I think if all the states stood up and said, no, we're just not going to do it. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of surprised at how fast so many of them signed on. It, it was at the time when the economy had, had fallen well, out. And so, you know, they were desperate for money. And so is, is your child's education, I mean, it, somebody said the other day, and I agree with them, it, it's, up, it's up to the highest bidder now. It's literally up to the highest bidder, and, and it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of literacy. That's the mm -hmm. cost. Now, at the April 29th school board meeting, which I was not at, but obviously followed, um, Assistant Superintendent Chip McGee did give a, a presentation. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the impression it was hugely long, but to the school board about Common Core. And one of the statements he made, and that's in the minutes, is that he said it could be adopted without additional expense, which in a way is kind of disingenuous because it's already in a budget as yeah, a line item. Yeah. yeah, there were a couple line items in the budget. Yeah, so I mean, maybe not additional that, by the way, we're going to hear they need extra but it is going to cost us something. I'm told, and, I, and I, 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 I forgive me if you already said it, that the state of New Hampshire seems unable to tell us what it's going to cost the state. Education Week says that implementation costs will probably be at least 
$289 per student right. nationwide. Right. And what, we have over 100,000 kids in the state of New Hampshire right. in the school so system. So do the math. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what is the problem that, that nobody can determine costs? And, and what are the costs going to consist of? Textbooks, training, tests, what? Well, Does anybody know? Uh, no. I, uh, you know, this is, I've gone before the Board of Education and asked them what is the estimate, and nobody will answer that question. Legislators have asked the Department of Education, what is this going to cost? Nobody will answer that. Now, other states have come up with cost estimates. They have? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, Any I, idea what they're saying per student? Uh, no, but I know it's a large amount of money. It's certainly not going to cost the schools nothing. I mean, we already have schools. Well, how could it not cost I nothing? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. If nothing I mean, else, teachers are going to have right. to train. So there there could be costs in. that are already in the works anyway. You know, if you if you had slotted that you were that you needed this, you were going to replace these textbooks anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, then you can play yeah. games, accounting games. Right. Yeah. But eventually what's going to happen is, like I said, when, when the assessments start coming back, if the school, you know, if the student, then schools are, they've already started realigning. Uh, um, Hooks it just replaced all their textbooks based on Common Core. So, I saw that in the news. Right. They, yeah. they took out everyday math and they put in one of the best math programs, Singapore Math, based on that. Common Core, which I think was a good, which is a good move and for And that was Hooksit. pricey, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so there are, now, you know, they could say, well, we would do this anyway, but you have to wonder. Yeah, I, I know. mean, you know, this is, I, I don't know. I'm I, not a big believer in coincidences yeah. on anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Nash, Nashua applied, <laughs> actually applied for Race to the Top money to come into their district to help cover the cost. But now their superintendent, interestingly enough, is saying it's not costing the district anything. Now you go figure that one out. Did they get any money? No. For race to the they didn't? No. no. That's all very intriguing, no. isn't it? You know, and, and here's my point of all of this. Here's what Texas did. Texas said no from the beginning. Yeah, I know. They just said, nope, we're not going to play that game. And what they did is they brought in the experts and they said, you, now, we want world-class standards. We're not going to go with those common core. We, we don't want mediocrity. We want the best for our students. And Sandra Stotsky actually helped them develop Rolling. their standards. And uh, so I don't understand why this was not a priority for our Department of Education. I would think under Governor Lynch or under Governor Hassan mm -hmm. that this would be their priority. The, above all else, is mm -hmm. let's, let's not settle. Why are we settling in this state for mediocrity? Why are we settling for standards that the experts say are not worthy of being in our school? Why don't we set the bar up here well, instead of down here? Yeah, and particularly where education is one of the biggest cost drivers right. for taxpayers. Right. It, it makes no sense right. that we're not howling. And, and people say, well, p kids move from state to state. Well, okay, but what if they come from Texas now? Yeah, but that still has to be a smaller part of the whole student population. Right. I mean, right. it's not like everybody's moving. Yes. You know, we're not all gypsies yeah. moving from campground exactly. to campground, exactly. for goodness sakes. Exactly. So why not set that bar high? I suppose I'll get in trouble for saying something about gypsies and are politically correct. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, I've been known to get in trouble before <laughs> for not being politically correct. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy over the whole quality Yes. issue of the standards established by Common Core. And I know, and, and I have not done any anywhere near the research that you have. I mean, it would be so pale in comparison. But I keep reading these articles that, that very learned authors are constantly saying that Common Core is going to dumb down standards. Mm hmm now, your research, what's, what, are you coming up with that? That's, a, that's exactly what, what they do. Uh, I, I'll give you an example. I went to, um, well, a couple of years ago, the Secretary of Education came to Manchester on a bus tour. When this was first revealed, when nobody knew about it, I mean... The <laughs> state? Yes. Or the, or the U.S.? Ca came, to, came to Manchester. The U.S. or the state? The state. Same. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. And um, he, he stopped by one of, the, one of the schools, so I thought, well, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pop in. <clears throat> And um, he was given a presentation with the mayor and some of the teachers, you know, and, and I walked up to him afterwards, you know, because unfortunately they weren't taking questions from the audience, but I was in the audience. So I walked Don't up to love him. love that. Yeah. <laughs> and I walked up to him and I said, so how do you reconcile states like California, Massachusetts, dumbing down their standards mm -hmm. for Common Core? And he had no explanation for me. I mean, I mean how do you explain it? How is he going to explain that to me? He had no explanation he had, no, at all. He had no explanation. No. 
I mean, he just basically kind of looked at me. I think he was kind of thinking, here's this mom coming out of the stands, and, you know, I was in shorts and a T-shirt and <laughs> looking like just a, a typical mom, and he, I think he was kind of, people didn't even know about it back then. So I think it kind of caught him off, off guard, but he didn't have it, you know, it wasn't like he said, well, here's what we're going to do, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you know, this is our plan, and literally did no not answer. have an explanation for how, why they would do that. Why would they dumb down their standards? I mean, this, these are states that had some of the best standards in, in the country. And so my question is, why are now the schools in the state of New Hampshire following that path? Why are they not saying, you know what? Yeah. We're, we expect more for our public school students. We pay a lot of money. There is no reason that these kids should be subjected to that. They should, they should have the best quality teachers, best quality standards. We should raise the bar. And, and that's just not being done. So, you know, I met Sandra Stotsky talks about the English standards as a, a bunch of empty skills, uh, you know, that... She actually called them? Uh, yes, and that they are not going to be ready for college. I mean, in the top performing countries, your student has to be done with calculus to get into college. Done. This path, they will not be done with calculus, not if they follow Common Core. So they're not even going to be close to what, you know, the kids in Singapore and China are doing. So, and, and it's interesting because the, the sellers of Common Core say that they want our kids to compete on an international yeah, basis. Yeah. They have not reconciled the fact that the standards don't put them there. They keep saying that they will, but the experts say, no, they won't. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that, you know, luckily in Indiana, they're, they're pulling back. It's kind of staggering. It is. Now that just recently happened in Indiana. Yes, the, I, because there was 800 people at the state house about two weeks ago, really? rallying for really? getting that the, many. Indiana had some. Indiana so had that some had of to the be best. a statewide yes. type of grassroots effort. It yes. had to be. Yeah, they had some of the best standards in the country too, Indiana, and they had to dumb theirs down for Common Core. So the parents there are going, "What did we just buy?" What did we just buy? And this was under a Republican governor and a Republican superintendent who have. Who are now gone voters they are now gone so now you have a new governor and a new superintendent a democrat and now you have people saying no more and and they're, they're starting to listen to the people I, when people speak up when they advocate mm -hmm. for their child mm -hmm. i have seen it happen the problem is is getting parents to speak up and do something that's what i have trouble don't you think some of it's just because parents are overwhelmed i mean it seems like every time yeah. you turn around there's a new program yeah. or a new mandate yes. or the kids are coming home with some new textbook and i mean half the time the parents are looking at it going i have no clue what this is about yeah you know? Just hire a tutor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, I think sometimes it's because they honestly, genuinely, yes. really don't understand right. that all this stuff is right. going on. And like you had mentioned earlier, you hadn't heard about this until a few months ago. The yeah. parents in Indiana yeah. hadn't heard about it either. At all. No, and they just became involved within like probably the last year. Now, I saw this coming over a decade ago. Really? This That's is not this, Yes. This, it, the, one of the chief architects, who's Mark Tucker, uh, has actually one of the consultants to the Department of Education a couple years came into the Department of Education. If you go on the internet and you Google um, Mark Tucker with a C, letter to Hillary Clinton, there is a letter that he wrote to her when this is what he tried to do during Isn't the Clinton administration. Isn't he the one who wants to get rid of all local school boards? He wants to get rid of local school boards <laughs> and he has no support, there's no support from him for local control. And he just literally, I think it was yesterday, issued an entire article about why we need to do away with local school boards and local control in education. This is the man that the Department of Education in New Hampshire has reforming our schools, competency-based education. Um, he's on our payroll? I don't know so if he's still on our, he was a few years ago, he was at consulting. Now, I don't know if he got paid. I'm not sure how much he got oh, paid. Oh, sure he got paid. You would think, you would think. And if he's a consultant, yes. probably a lot more than we'd this be is, happy This was hearing. his plan. So go read the letter that he wrote to Hillary Clinton about his plan, because it's not fully implemented. Again, part of the plan is to get rid of school boards. I Illinois just proposed legislation get rid of school boards. It can happen. You know, people say, well, you know, it, it can't happen in New Hampshire, really, because this is the individual that the Department of Education brought in, and they're following his plans and reforming our high schools right now with competency-based education. And if you look at the competencies, for instance, um, I took uh, the competencies from uh, Litchfield and Rochester and the Department of Education, I took them to a, uh, a mathematician from Johns Hopkins 
Professor Stephen Wilson and asked him to look at the competencies. Also Bedford, he actually gave Bedford a, a thumbs up. I mean, Rolling? yeah, yeah, well, and, and great, great, great news for them. Um, but the competencies in Rochester and Litchfield and on the Department of Education's website, he just ripped them to shreds. I mean, just, you know, use terms like crappy, garbage. Really? Oh, yes. Those yes. are strong words. Yes, yes. And I'd be happy to share that information with anything straight from him. Um, so these are the kind of things, you know, competencies are not only uh, based on academics. They're mm -hmm. based on your attitudes and your values and beliefs. Mm -hmm. And we saw that with the nickel and dimed book that mm -hmm. was being used in, yep. in, in yep. the Bedford schools to meet a competency. That was not based on academics. That was based on, you know, change. there were no academic benefits to that book. It didn't teach personal finance. So that was the problem that, you know, back then, I, I, if you go back, it's, it's actually I saw it on YouTube, um, where uh, in, what I read before the school board is this is the problem with competencies. You know, if, if they're so great, why do we have a mathematician saying these aren't any good in many of our schools? What kind of an answer did you get? Well, again, you don't get any answers. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't really get. I don't get explanations. Yeah, uh... I don't get answers. They just. This is what it is. And and I think until parents start saying no, we want something better for our kids. This is what they're going to get. I mean, I'm only one person, and and I'm and I could be ignored. Well, maybe ignored. <laughs> but if more parents, if 800 people show up at the state house like they did in in Indiana, yeah, exactly. They'll listen. Yeah, they'll listen. But. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to av avoid mm -hmm. or not respond to right. a crowd of people who and the are governor did. And demanding answers. The governor did. They halted it, and they're going to review it. And um, I, I suspect they'll back reinstitute their high standards. And you know what? They're going to have better standards than New Hampshire unless the New Hampshire parents demand better. Are there any local school systems in New Hampshire balking at the standards right now? Um, not that I know of. I know Not that yet. the Board of Education took some uh, testimony today because the rules are now just coming out, and I was told that one gentleman was there, but I don't know if he's still in a school right now or not. Um, you know. So nobody even knows what the rules are yet? No. But yet? They were just released today. When, when is this supposed to take effect? This coming September? Or a year? It's already in It's already it's in. Already in. Yeah, they, they're already implementing it, which is, which is a real problem for a lot of people. They're realizing, wait a second, the rules haven't even been written. But they're implementing it. But they're implementing it. But the Board of Education voted on this a couple of years ago and said yes to this. Four people. Uh, that I don't get. I absolutely don't get it. Now, I, I know that um, Chip McGee told the school board that it would be implemented grades 3 through 12 in Bedford. Hmm. But Common Core covers from grade 1, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think kindergarten, too. They're, gonna kindergarten test, they're as well. testing kindergarten kids. Wow. And, you know, I have to, so how is Bedford getting away with not implementing until grade 3? I don't know. Or is it just going to get phased in and kind of go backwards? I don't know. Bedford's grades? doing a lot more to be transparent about this than other school districts. I have to, I have to say, and, and, and you know, I, I watched the first meeting. I haven't watched the second one yet. Um, but I have to say that, you know, I, you know, I know that I challenge this district a lot, but I think that we have a really pretty good crew here. I, mm -hmm. I, they may even be surprised to hear that. But I think that if parents demand better in this mm -hmm. district, I think these are the people that actually listen. I think it's just a matter of getting the parents to, to speak up. Other school districts may not listen, and these people, you know, they've they've shown signs that that they are willing to listen, that they are mm -hmm. willing to, you know, th there's been other issues. You know, I'm still concerned about the fact that, uh, you know, Richard Evans tried to raise the bar mm -hmm. with uh, his petition, and the district seems to be reluctant to do yeah, that. He, yeah, his comments kind of fell on deaf ears. Yeah, that, on that that's issue, a yeah. disappointment. But I, you know, I don't know if he had enough parents really backing him, and, and they should have because this is an individual who was really trying to improve the quality in, in, the, in the school. Well, and instead we saw some people yeah. question his ability to yes. make a comment like that, which yes. I, I thought was And terrible. interestingly enough, Nashua was doing this. Nashua was uh, 
raising the bar on, on, on passing AP classes and things mm -hmm. like that. Something he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Nashua, the superintendent, they were already working on this. They didn't need a, a mm -hmm. Richard Evans yeah. to go out there yeah. and file a warrant article and practically beg the school district to do this. Nashua was already doing it. So, you know, unfortunately, I think sometimes we get that kind of, you know, let's keep the bar low. Mm -hmm. Let's um, let's not raise the standards, you know, because I don't, I'm not really sure why. You know, you'd have to just guess about that. But, uh, you know, but but overall, you know, I've seen some some good things come out from from the individuals working in this district. They're they're willing to listen. Well, I think the one encouraging thing in the email that I got back, you know, when they said they weren't mm -hmm. going to be able to do the show, was that they did say that they didn't feel uh, they didn't have a position to advocate right. for or against. Yeah. So I thought, well, that's good. Yeah. Because I agree. at least they're not trying to shove it down everybody in yeah. Bedford's throats. Yeah. yeah. They're willing to listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's good that, and, and hopefully people will watch this show in Bedford so that local people will go, gee, I didn't realize that, right. and maybe start asking more questions right. and maybe start giving more input on what right, they think about Right, because other schools, you know, I'm going across the state talking to different communities, and if, if they put enough pressure on their school, their school may up the standards mm -hmm. in their district, and so why should Bedford settle for this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm hoping that the individuals that work in Bedford, the, the, the superintendent and the curriculum superintendent and the school board will not settle. You know, I, I think they're good people that, you know, are seeing this and I just think they need to be more transparent and let us know exactly what they're going to do to, you know, improve the standards here mm -hmm. and what they're going to do, the data collection. I mean, that's, that's the other topic that is creating quite a controversy around the country too. Yeah, I want to get into that. I did um, pick up through the, the school board minutes that at least a couple of the school board members seem to have some questions yeah, on some yeah. of this stuff. I, I, Bill Foote's doing a great job of asking good questions, saying, mm -hmm. you know, shouldn't we be aligning with the best standards mm -hmm. instead of just accepting this? Um, Don Graff brought up the issue of local control that you know some yeah, parents are raising yeah. that concern and they're absolutely right uh, so yeah I think you know the discussion is taking place uh, they're asking good questions and uh, you know I'm hoping that as time goes on there's more transparency which you know I, I have no reason to believe there won't be um, and and that we'll see some good you know good things and if you know, parents just need to continue to put that pressure and, or I shouldn't say pressure, just give that um, support to the district mm -hmm. because they need support. If, if, they, if they're going to do this, they need the, the public support. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing I'm afraid of is that things will go along so far before parents even know yeah. what Common Core is. That's true. Because again, it's not something that's like right out there that everybody you talk to, oh yeah, Common Core, and they have an opinion on it. True, and you know, I went to the uh, Board of Education meeting in Manchester the other night, and they had the Department of Education, Heather Gage, come out and speak to the board, and she brought a. Now she thinks that's wonderful. Correct? Yes, and she sold. Yeah. And she, that's basically what she did. She went up to the school board and she sold it, and so I came up afterwards, and one of the question, one of the concerns that I had after she spoke, and I've listened to her and I've listened to the commissioner a couple times. Isn't she new to New Hampshire? Yes, too? just a couple months. That's all. Yes. But yet she's already decided this is great. For New Hampshire kids. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so my concern, and I raised this to the school board in Manchester because I was invited by a Manchester resident, is that, you know, part of her presentation was that this is going to teach the kids to think critically. Boy, where have we heard that before? <laughs> and and so shades of IB, right? <laughs> yes. So I went up and I said, if this is supposed to teach kids to think critically. Why didn't she lay out mm -hmm. all the criticisms mm -hmm. of Common Core when she came before the school board? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't she good lay question. out, here's yeah. the good, yeah. I'm okay with laying out the good, yeah. here's the bad, here's yeah. the ugly. At least give the balance. Yeah. Here's all the information. Yeah. We still support it and here's why. Yeah, not just do the sales pitch. Yes. But you're telling these people are going to teach our kids to think critically when they can't even look at the mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. with a critical eye that I have seen. I have not seen it. If they have, I have not seen it. And they have not Yeah, because not people certainly deserve to know what the negatives yes. are. Yes. And, and then maybe make an educated decision. Exactly. But Look not just all of be, be spoon fed. Yes. This is the greatest thing since Wonder Bread. Yes. And we just have to do it for right. our kids. Right. You know, yay us. Yes. Yes. And, you know, you would think the Department of Education 
would take that approach that, you know, we're not going to advocate for anything that's mediocre, yeah. but we're just yeah. going to lay it out here. And here's why we're doing it. We're doing it because we don't want you to lose this Title I. Yeah, be honest honesty? about it. Yeah. Where's the truth? Maybe people would yes. say, you know what, let us lose the money. Yeah. We're not willing to give up standards yes. to get some money in. Yes. Or why don't you, Department of Education, go back to work yeah. and bring us yeah. something of quality, which is what you should be doing in the first it, place. Exactly. This is just a way of saying, you know, we're just going to subject our, our, our uh, role to a national level instead of doing the work ourselves. You know, it, it's so big. And one of the things that I know that you have talked about, and it seems to be a huge issue everywhere, is that Common Core requires a tremendous amount of data collection on yes. the kids. So I think what, you know, the people who are listening to this show need to know is a couple of things, uh, or are a couple of things, um, the kind of info that's going to get collected, how does it affect the privacy of not only students, but the whole family, the right. parents. Can a parent say no? You can't have that information about my kid or my family. And then the other big one is, what's going to be done with all this information? <laughs> a lot of those questions are still out there. A lot of people are asking those questions. A lot of them have not been answered. Um, and and so, it, you know, I go back to the Obamacare thing mm -hmm. that, you know, we mm -hmm. have to pass the bill to figure out what's in it. And now we're starting to figure out what was all part of this. Um, a lot of which is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, so they are collecting. There's a longitudinal database, and that was part, that was one of the strings attached to getting race to the top funds. We instituted it. We get new race to the top funds. Go figure that one out. Um, but that was Problem. part of the system. We have to start data collecting, data collecting, data collecting on these students. And it's not just, you know, how did your child do in mathematics or how did your child? That's it's what I want people to understand. personal information. Yes. There's a 400-point yeah. data, data 400 points. points. 400 points. And parents need to go figure out and go look at that, that they are collecting others, where they get off at the bus stop, religious affiliation. I mean, there are things that are about your family. I mean, and, and they really Aren't have... Aren't they even going to do, like, income and where you work uh, and all kinds of stuff like you, that? You have to go through the data point system to take a look at that. It was interesting because so many parents were now, you know, looking at yeah. this and criticizing yeah. it that one day the, the website was taken down, and they were like, they took down the website because they don't want us to see it. But you can still find they it. They actually took it down. They took down the website. I don't know why. They, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Maybe it crashed maybe because so many people were going to it. But this is information that's being gathered. The FERPA laws were eviscerated under, under President Obama. He went around Congress and now basically... Now tell people what you mean by that. Because again, the acronyms, people go, the who laws? Yeah. Well, it, it was the Federal Education Rights and Privacy Act. Okay. So this was something that basically gave you some protection on the privacy right. of, right. your, of your child. Which you should have. That is now gone. That is totally. now gone. And this information can be shared without your consent, without a parent's consent. That is and important. And you can't opt out, correct? Well, you can't opt out, but what I'm seeing in other states, state of New York, just for instance, that there's a, a parent advocate, I think she's a teacher too out there, that just sent me legislation in New York, and they are going to, to um, propose legislation in New York to protect the privacy of students. Um, they're also collecting data on teachers. So teachers might want to look at this mm. with a real close eye. Uh, but, but on the students now, I mean, it, doesn't the data collection go, again, beyond how they're doing in testing yes. or what their marks are or maybe the family dynamics? Aren't they getting involved in, like, record keeping of their behavior, their behavior. or any it's, infractions it's, it's they've called made? It's called psychometric or? testing and, and psychometric testing. psychometric testing and, and you know you kind of when you go for a job they kind of yeah. give you the serve you kind of like you know fill this out we want to see what kind of person you are are you oh, adaptable I, hate, I used to hate those yeah those kind things. of things that's yeah. what psychometric testing is but you know I've, I've read some other criticisms that you know that this is a way again to change you know to to kind of get them to to change their ideas about something and and um I'm trying to think of an example. There's an example that was put out in uh, North Carolina where uh, there was a, a sheet that, that the students had to do because now they're going to be reading more informational text. And it, it, it led them, yeah, led them in a direction 
that you know become a political activist. Start yeah, writing yeah. your legislators yeah. about this. I and, saw some of the lists. Yeah, yeah and so, yeah, so what, this, what, what's the best way to insulate? Yes, as opposed yes. to maybe reading a literary classic. Right. Wonderful. Right. So all of this information is being collected. It's being dispersed. Can be dispersed to anybody. Can be dispersed to government agencies. Now, some of you might say, well, what's How the big deal? How about private companies who, private who companies. write textbooks and private things companies. like this? They can all access yes. this. Yes, because that's the, it can now get out there. So, um, you know, you, you have the IRS scandal going on right now. Yeah. Now we can yeah. see what a government yeah. can do if this information yeah. is abused. Uh, you know, you have parents who, who will not allow their pictures to be taken, their child's pictures yes. to be taken into school. Well, guess what, parents? This information can get out there now. They can, one of the concerns I think that a lot of people have is that this can be shared with the Department of Labor. So if this information wow. can be shared with the Department of Labor, wow. when your child graduates high school or college and goes to get a, a job, there would be means of access. They would be mean access this. So if this information is out there, if you're not of the right religious persuasion or political persuasion, or you don't have, you know, you're, you, maybe a, a paper that you wrote on legalizing drugs in eighth grade, and you know, maybe now you're a parent and you're realizing, gosh, that really wasn't such a good but, idea. Yeah, or something. I mean, we all change our yeah. attitudes is, as we grow. Yes, all is day. this yeah. something that's going to be yeah. in your uh, file that now employers It'll can be access? Be a good chance. So these are the concerns that are being raised. Now, and what about even where they're collecting, you know, uh, I'm sure in here somewhere there would be private information that would relate to health. Right. If they're collecting exactly. behavior health, and so on. Medical. So again now, couldn't this even be available to insurance companies, yes. for example? Yes. Um, one school, I mean, the potential is, is One school collected humongous. DNA on, a stu on students. Uh, you know, when you told me that, <laughs> I almost fell over. Yeah. What would possibly be the purpose I do not of know. collecting a kid's I do DNA not know, but for I would a data bank? I would be very disturbed by that. I would be very bothered because they did send home a permission slip. But if they didn't get the permission slip back, they, would st they still did it. So you can opt your child out. It wasn't one of those opt your child in things. And they were giving kids like free iPads and things like that. So probably most of the kids didn't even bring it home. Why not give Sign them DNA? Sign the parent and get your iPad, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look at the, you know, we warn our kids about the Internet. Do not give yeah. out information. And, and kids don't understand that. Yes. They, they do not. They don't understand it. No. And so now they you have. They have no have, idea of the implications you have these of people, stuff like that. Yeah, you have these people in authority, people that, you know, that these, these students are saying, well, this is my school. They're yeah. asking me for this information. Yeah. I need to give it to yeah. them, having no idea where this information is going to go. So this is, you know, I think one of the things Bedford parents can do is go to the school board and say, we want a policy mm -hmm. that no information leaves this district unless it is court ordered mm -hmm. or unless you have my signature. But I, I mean, you could, you could draft a policy locally. We could go to our legislators and say, we want a policy or a legislation passed. I think it should be done locally and I think it should be done at a state level. I agree with you and I think a parent should have the the right I mean obviously the educational information their marks and so on well I mean that yeah the school system is going to have access to that yes. kind of stuff but beyond that uh, personal family information, things like that. Oh, yes. I, I don't know why any parent feels as though that would have to be shared yes. with not only particularly the school system, but beyond that to, to areas you don't even know. Right. And that's why I think the parents in, in New York are just in an uproar over this. So, I, I mean, you know, if your child is at a government school, mm -hmm. now if they're in a private school or home school, you know, you need to check and see what the, you know, how that would impact. Because I know the homeschoolers have to report a lot of their stuff to, to the local school districts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, homeschoolers might want to look at that too. Uh, but if you're in a government school, and this is pre-K, because they changed this law a couple years ago. It used to be K through 12. Interestingly enough, piece of legislation a couple years ago, they had brought, they said, we want to expand this unique pupil identifier number from pre-K through college. So if your kids are in college, they're collecting this information. Wow. They're collecting this data. So there needs to be a so clear. So that's not yes. at what, four, three, four years old? Yes. Tracking it all the way. It's Orwellian. Yes. It, it's like those books, you know, that used to come out years ago yes. saying that, you know, the, the fictional books that would say the government's going to take over your mind and so on. I mean, it, well, and another thing, in, in, uh, there's, a, there's surveys that are given to kids all the time in school. 
and uh, about attitudes. And yes, such. and and there was a survey given to a student in Nashua, and his parents were furious because it it was kind of like a where are you going to go in your career, mm -hmm. and it came back a rapper. <laughs> so, which you know, I wasn't surprised I'm yeah. a kid. Who put you it? Know? You know, how did he fill out the survey that it came back as a rapper? I mean, these are the things that are being done in the schools, and parents are going. You mean that's what they suggested for? This is what they suggested. Oh, I thought you meant that he put it down. No, that he wanted to. No, he just filled it out and are it you came serious? back as a rapper. <laughs> as a rapper. That's absurd. Parents are furious. That's absurd. Yes. So look at the surveys. So if a, if a girl loves batoning and taking dancing lessons and so on and maybe isn't a great student, are they going to yeah. say she, she should be a stripper? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And, and yeah. how, you know, my kids, I know my kids have changed their mind over the, you of know. Of course. And, of you know, course. can they really determine? I mean, some of these tests, you know, as I looked at psychometric testing, yeah. I noticed that one of the red flags that kept coming up was that it's used to discriminate that you have to be very careful that you don't use this information to discriminate against individuals. So, and that could happen in every level. Right. That could even happen in a classroom. Right. I so, mean, I don't think most yeah. teachers think that way, but, right. but obviously right. but if the somewhere in a kid's back, school career, there could be yeah. a teacher affected by some report mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. student. We're all human beings. Right. And if you read that a kid's a troublemaker or this, that, or the other thing, yeah. that's in your head. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I'm not judged on how I was when I was in school. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably we all I, would I join you evolved. somewhere. Uh, show me an adult who doesn't have at least one incident that they'd rather not advertise. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and that you hopefully have learned from and moved on. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's part of growing up. Exactly. I mean, being a kid means doing stupid things yes. sometimes. Yes. And, you know, that should not be being tracked right. through your educational process that's available to the rest of the world forever. Yes. And the fact that there doesn't seem to be any restrictions right. as to who can access this information, I mean, to me, that's just plain appalling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's all part of Common Core. Yes. I, I, you know, that alone should be enough to make school boards and parents hysterical. I would think. I, I would me. <laughs> I would think. And, you know, and then again, I mean, I, I, I know that one of the huge arguments, and we kind of touched on it a bit, is that the advocates all but get down on their knees and hold their hands up and swear that Common Core is not going to affect con local control of education. Right. And clearly, that, how, that's a I don't total know how, wild card. Yeah, I don't know how because number one, your school boards didn't vote for this. Yeah, uh, parents didn't even know about it, so this is not a grassroots effort. Um, you, your legislators, many of them, didn't even know that this had been passed at the board of education. So the le so this did not come from the people. This is not a locally controlled thing. And you know, I went to the Manchester school board meeting, and they said, well, you know, we can still pick out our own books. Sure you can. As long as they when you, fit. Yeah. When you start the taking these tests, yeah. these assessments, yeah. and your kids are not jumping over yeah. that bar, then the state steps in to help your school. Not the parents. Right. Not the parents right. saying, you know what, right. maybe it's because you have everyday math in this school that my kid can't pass this assessment. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe we need to replace it. No, you're not passing this assessment. Here's the plan. How is that? local control how is that oh, it's not. coming from the parents and and isn't part, and, and again please correct me if i'm wrong because i was trying to scan and become like not an expert certainly but like a quick conversationalist yeah. at least you know <laughs> so i can ask you questions yes. on common core and am i wrong that part of all this deal is that a state is only allowed to change no more up to, but no more, than 15% of any Common Core standards within its own state. That's right. So please tell me how that's locally controlled. Now, I did yeah. bring this up at a meeting with the Commissioner of Education in, in New Hampshire, uh, Virginia Berry. I did bring this up at a public meeting one time, and she assured me that that is not the case. Uh, well, on Achieve's website, they specifically right say there. that they are limited. You've read it. Everybody knows that there's a 15% limitation. Now, maybe she meant a limitation on the state. And they would the have to approve it, though, right? I mean, just because you. No, you can, you can you adjust can it by 15%. And interestingly enough, um, 
uh, the curriculum superintendent Chip McGee brought that up in in the the uh, school board meeting a couple okay. weeks ago, and and it was interesting because he read it the way I read it mm -hmm. that he's limited, and he, and he even said you know how do I adjust these standards now according to Virginia Barry the commissioner, the the school could do whatever they want with them. Uh, and I and I I'm, I think we need clarification on this. It would seem because I read it the way uh, Chip McGee read it that mm -hmm. that we are limited by fifteen percent. Uh, maybe it's just the state changing them. It's whatever the case is. Please tell me who we go to to lobby mm -hmm. to change the standards. If we don't like these standards in the state, who do we go to? You know, to to change them nationwide. So, like, say Bedford wanted to. Would they'd have to get state permission, correct? Uh, I don't know if they need state permission, but th it's just limiting them to 15%, the way I read it, and I believe the way Chip has read it. And I think he's right about this. Um, and so, you know, he even mentioned that, um, you know, when I was listening to him is, you know, how, it's, it seems seems hard to do. How, mm -hmm. how do you measure that? How do mm -hmm. you say, okay, 15% of what? Standards? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a mathematical equation here. Mm -hmm. It's not a number. Um, so, you know, that just goes back to, is this local control when they're putting a percentage limitation yeah. on yeah, what you can do with the control. standards? That's not local control. Exactly. Well, you know, believe it or not, we are into the time zone now. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the subject is so huge, and I don't even know if we've touched on 5% no. of it. So, I mean, I'd really like to be able to maybe continue on, sure. you know, with more discussions on this and maybe get some of the other people who are, you know, involved in different factions of mm -hmm. it, whether it be through legislation or what have you, um, which I'd kind of come to you and say, okay, yeah, Marie, I want you to come back, and who would you like to bring with you? And yeah. I have a feeling you're, you'd know exactly who I think we're going to see some privacy legislation next year. I think that's yeah. going to be huge. I, I've, I've already got legislators saying, we need this, and I agree with them. So yeah, I, think I think that, that would be, be huge. helpful. Yeah, yeah and, and again, um, then they're going to face that whole aspect of having to educate the public what the heck they're talking about mm -hmm. because I think so many people right. and I mean I don't have kids in school anymore my, my kids are grown yeah so some of these things don't personally affect me but yet I find it shocking and yes. and I find it just so compelling that the parents need to know about it absolutely and, and be able to make an informed decision yes. because it's just wrong and this is very much a bipartisan effort to get it in yeah and it's a bipartisan effort to fight it, it. is now it really is yeah. I mean you have a lot of Republican governors that signed on to this so even though it happened through the Obama administration we don't have Jet, the Democrats yes Jeb just, Bush is a big proponent yeah. of this and I'm just like you know there's a lot of Republican governors that signed on to this so you have a bipartisan support of it, but then what I'm also seeing from the grassroots is a bipartisan support to get rid of it. Yeah. You know, you've got the teachers unions now saying, whoa, this is, this is not good. You know, we need to pull back on this. That uh, in you itself know, this, is... This is why they went on strike in Chicago. When yeah. This was one of the reasons. Yeah. And that in itself is an indicator right. of, of trouble down the road. Yes. Well, as I said, we could talk about this for a long time. I'm glad you were able to get out some of the major points, and hopefully people in Bedford will start asking some questions now. And as we're getting closer and closer to more and more of it coming in, um, and I'll continue to ask uh, Chip and Tim to come in too because yeah. they said that they're going to working through development phases. It would be so. a great way to, to bring transparency to yes. what's going on yes. in our school district, absolutely. Yes, and, and again, it doesn't just affect parents, it affects right. all of us. I mean, right. we all have a role in this. Yes. And uh, no matter what anybody says, if nothing else, part of our role is paying for all the stuff, so we right. need to know too. Yep, I agree. <laughs> Anne Marie, as always, yep. you ask something. You, you do <laughs> your you. research, and uh, you certainly give people info, and I commend you because well, I know you. that you take your bricks and bats sometimes, too, for being an activist. <laughs> it's part of, the, yep. part of the deal. Yeah. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. Well, everybody, um, for those of you who didn't know about Common Core before today, I think that today you received a little taste of it, and I would assume 
knowing all of you, as I do, I think, that you would start to be reacting and going, oh, oh, what is this? And maybe start asking some questions. And we're going to stay with this. We're going to continue to follow it um, because I think it's huge. And if you heard some of these concerns today between quality of education, cost of it, privacy issues, and, and many other things, those three things alone should make you sit up and take notice and say, what the heck is Common Core? Are we going to accept it? Do we need to change it? What do we need to do in Bedford? So, thank you for watching. We'll keep telling it like it is on this. We want you to ask questions that try to tell it like it is too. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.